For the past year, Dark Viper AU has been trying to complete Grand Theft Auto V without taking a single point of damage, otherwise known as an OCO or One Hit Knockout Run. These attempts would be achieved by using a mod in order to set your health to 1 permanently, so any damage throughout the playthrough would kill you. Any death and the run is over. This became a sort of phenomenon in its own right because Dark Viper AU would make it his mission to complete this goal no matter how long it took. He came very close numerous times. Wait for me. There's more. and it seemed like it was only a matter of time before the news would break. Well, the news did break, but it wasn't what anyone expected. An Oko run of GTA V was completed, but not by Dark Viper. Instead, by a complete newcomer to the community called Unnamed, who had no prior history of speedruns or challenge runs of any kind. A lot of drama ensued. Dark Viper's reaction to this was questionable at best, and it didn't take long before his fans started brigading and attacking Unnamed's run, with statements that it was fake, spliced, or tampered with in order to cheat. Of course these armchair experts know nothing about the game, or speedrunning in its entirety. To those who don't know who I am, my name is English Ben, and I'm a Grand Theft Auto speedrunner, who's mainly known for the older games such as Vice City and San Andreas. I'm not going to pretend that I am an expert of GTA V, because I don't speedrun this game, but that is why today I will be joined by several experts of the game, Dry Ice, Asuchi, and Soros. These guys are world-class speedrunners of GTA V, and also moderators for the game's official speedrunning leaderboard. And today, we are going to analyze Unnamed's run fully and conclude objectively whether the run is legitimate or not. They were each contacted individually in order to make sure the facts and opinions you see were not just a single opinion being agreed with by the rest of the team. It's important to first understand that since this is a challenge run and not a speed run, the run itself doesn't require the same standards of verification that a normal GTA 5 speed run would. For example, in order to submit a speedrun to the official leaderboards, it must be done in a single sitting. You are not allowed to quit the game, come back the next day, load a save, and continue. You are also not allowed to use video editing to tamper with the run in any way, or piece segments together to create a finished product. This is what is known as splicing within speedrunning. Unnamed did not complete a speedrun, so it doesn't have to follow the speedrun rules per se. However, Speedrun rules do have a fair amount of guidelines we can use in order to rule out cheating to a solid degree. This includes the aforementioned splicing technique, forbidding cheat codes, game modifications, or any kind of external programs that would affect the game, and also making some in-game restrictions in order to make the run a real challenge. These rules are what's known in GTA 5 speedrunning as any percent no mission skips rules. Timing is done via RTA, which is real-time attack. And is what I mentioned before, aka the run is done in real time and you're not allowed to piece segments together in post-production. Video footage must be permanent, so there must be a version of the run that is always available, for example a Twitch highlight or a YouTube VOD. You are not allowed to make changes to the game that cannot be done in the in-game menu, so basically no config file editing or anything like that. No cheat codes or mods of any kind, excluding the Oko mod for obvious reasons in this case. Key rebinds are only allowed if they are one-to-one, -one, meaning that you are allowed to rebind a key press to your mouse, for example, but you are not allowed to use any sort of script or macro to do sequences of inputs in a perfect manner. This one's a little convoluted, so I'll give you an example. Uh, during the mission, did somebody say yoga? You have to press a series of buttons in order to do the correct yoga poses. Rebinding your A key to an extra mouse button for convenience here is totally fine, as it is still a single input to a single output. Writing a macro or a script that will press the entire sequence for you with a single keyboard press is forbidden. Using the pre-order bonus of $500,000 is forbidden to ensure fair play, and any form of New Game Plus is forbidden, meaning that you cannot carry the state of a previous playthrough into the current run, for example, having the entire map unlocked. 
Any strategy that requires an active internet connection is banned, meaning you cannot abuse your internet connection to gain any sort of advantage or use any sort of online service to have an advantage in game. An example of this is the iFruit app, which you can download to your smartphone and upgrade your vehicles in game on the fly. Loading a save from a previous playthrough is forbidden, meaning if you go back and load the correct one right after, the run is still considered invalid and will not be accepted. The video must include full untampered footage from the text Ludendorff, L Luden, Ludendorff, I don't know, I don't run this game, North Yankton nine years ago until you finish the game. Any ending is permitted, the game has three endings, and in the case of this run, Trevor's ending is chosen. So it's specifically the run is considered complete when you shoot the gasoline around Trevor and lose control of Franklin. Using the mission skip feature is forbidden, which is where if you fail a mission three times, you are able to skip that portion of the mission and go on to the next checkpoint. That is disallowed. Using Trevor's ability is forbidden, as Trevor's special ability reduces the damage taken, and using any sort of body armor is forbidden. If you die at any point in the run, the run is considered over. As I mentioned before, the timing convention does not apply to challenge runs, so we can strike that off the list right away. Every other rule would be considered when evaluating unnamed's run, and if we find any breaches of these rules, then we would consider the run illegitimate. The first thing many have pointed to is that the run is in three parts on YouTube. This is of course quite hilarious, as one look at Dark Viper's Twitch broadcasts show that he does the exact same thing. He will finish a session and load it back up the next day in order to continue. Watch a few YouTube videos and uh, watch a little bit of Twitch. It is perfectly allowed in challenge runs to pause the game, do something else and come back later. What would make this suspicious is if Unnamed had used post-production software to make this look like one single segment of footage, as that would mean he did tamper with the footage in some way in order to piece it together. Unnamed also sent screenshots of the original footage and his game files, showing the dates they were both created and modified within Windows. This shows that he played in three sessions, the first session being the morning of May 14th at 9.39am the second being in the evening of the same day, and the third being the following morning. The runs were uploaded two days later in full, with the first recording showing the start of the run and the final segment showing not only the end of the run, but also stats for all three characters showing that no cheat codes were used and each character had zero deaths of any kind. The 9.39 a.m. start time is especially important as if you take a look at his game files, the last time the files were modified was 9.35 a.m., four minutes before the recording started. Unnamed was using a trainer for practice before his recording session started, and deleted the files before he started recording the actual run. These screenshots show that no files were modified during or after the run took place, and there is zero evidence to suggest that the video or game were tampered with. As we've seen with recent speedrun cheaters who are proven to be guilty beyond a reasonable doubt, they will usually claim to have accidentally deleted their mods or script folder that would usually show their innocence. There were many comments saying that the run was tampered with due to the fact that Trevor's ability bar was acting strange compared to the real game. As you can see in this footage, it is actually acting very strange, as it shouldn't be instantly drained as soon as it becomes charged. However, when we zoom out, you can see who this footage belongs to, the one and only Dark Viper. This is a byproduct of the Oko mod itself, as it automatically drains Trevor's ability bar whenever it charges. If this was somehow evidence that Unnamed was cheating, then I think we'd also have to call Dark Viper a cheater, but that's ridiculous. Many fans were claiming that the run cannot possibly be real because there is no evidence of previous practice or runs. As we know, Dark Viper streams his attempts daily to thousands of onlookers, so if he were to achieve his goal, it would be pretty likely that the run is legitimate. After all, someone would have likely noticed if he was cheating after all this time. Someone coming out of nowhere with such a huge accomplishment is definitely suspicious. No doubt about that. However, this point borders on the classic line of evidence of absence and absence of evidence. Just because you cannot easily find evidence that Unnamed had done prior attempts of this run, 
does not immediately mean that those attempts did not happen. In fact, his prior attempts can be found on YouTube, such as this run with two deaths they completed a few weeks before the zero death run was uploaded. This and other types of pseudo evidence just push an unfair, guilty until proven innocent agenda, and that is not what we are going for today. The first discrepancy pointed out was during the mission complications, where Franklin infiltrates Michael's house and steals a car for his boss, Simeon. During the run, Unnamed decides to missile dropkick a vehicle outside by ragdolling. Usually ragdolling would cause damage to the player, and in this case it would mean death. After a small amount of testing, however, it's very clear that ragdolling is not at all consistent, as confirmed by the moderators. Sometimes you will take a point of damage, and sometimes you won't. It seems to depend on what part of the hitbox actually collides with a surface. This particular example in Unnamed's run is definitely an extreme example, as the ragdoll you see is quite the dive. However, it is clearly possible to ragdoll in this specific location and not take damage if you are lucky enough. The next discrepancy is during the mission Nervous Run, where Trevor needs to make a trip to the local ammunition to purchase some trusty American firearms. I gotta swing by ammunition. Go to Sandy Shores Airfield, check it out. The claim is that Trevor's dialogue was different to what it should be, and that it was this way due to the fact that Unnamed had failed the mission previously, but was splicing in the successful attempt. This can also be easily proven wrong with a small amount of testing. The dialogue is random. I gotta make a stop at ammunition. You're meeting me at the Lost MC's airfield. What's going on, Ron? They were here for you. Here. For I gotta swing by ammunition. Go to Sandy Shores Airfield. Check it out. Sometimes Trevor will say that he wants to swing by ammunition, and sometimes he will say that he wants to stop by ammunition. You can try the mission as many times as you like. There's no correlation with how many times you've attempted the mission. Both Dry Ice and Soros agreed that there is nothing unusual going on here whereas Asurchi didn't give a specific verdict as they were not 100% certain on how the dialogue worked. Later on in the same mission, users have pointed out that Unnamed's health bar went red, as he was becoming exhausted from sprinting too long and should have then taken damage. This simply isn't how the game works. You have to keep sprinting for a few more seconds after your health bar flashes red before you actually take any damage and collapse. So there's nothing suspicious here at all. Everything is working here as intended, as confirmed by all moderators. The next mission we'll be looking at has two potential discrepancies that occur at the same time during the mission Friends Reunited. The more obvious one is that Unnamed has quite a brutal collision with another vehicle, which should cause damage and therefore death. However, this is also a shortcoming of the mod itself. Usually when you have a minor crash like this, you will take 10% damage. However, when you have the Oko mod running, you do not take damage from these collisions. All three moderators agreed that it is already difficult enough to take damage from such a collision normally, and this is amplified by the clunky workings of the Oko mod. The not as obvious discrepancy is how the dialogue carries on. Usually when you crash during mission dialogue, the dialogue will pause and sometimes the characters will comment on your reckless driving before going back to what they were saying. As you can see here, the dialogue just continues anyway. Sent him into a deep pit of doubt, despair. Just then, just as he hit rock bottom, he met a fat, silver-tongued troll under a bridge. This discrepancy wasn't pointed out very often, but when it was brought up, it was enough to convince skeptical viewers. If only these viewers had booted up the game and tried it themselves, as Soros did his own quick testing and confirmed that the dialogue doesn't get interrupted as you'd expect when crashing into things on this mission. Next up is the mission Three's Company, where an apparent audio splice was done as Michael can be heard screaming in pain while Unnamed is switching to Franklin. That's it! Get us out of here! However, this is a bug that always happens, as you can hear it in both Dark Viper's attempts and Saurus' speedrun of the game. During the Merryweather heist, it was pointed out that Unnamed magically lost his sticky bombs after the segment. This led some to believe that as he had many different inventory setups, maybe this was another splice section where he had not noticed a difference in his weaponry. 
This is completely intended, though. As Asuchi and Jai Ice both explain, the mission gives Michael sticky bombs to plant on the ship, and then returns the original amount given to you once you're finished. In this case, that amount is zero, so it's entirely scripted and happens to everybody. Just after this section with Michael, there's a section with Franklin where you must snipe some guards in vehicles and they will shoot at you. The armchair experts claim that this section makes no sense, as in their playthroughs they always would get hit here. Fortunately, we have a perfect coherent explanation by none other than Dark Viper himself. So the secret on this mission is that anyone past this point, these two boxes, uh, they're too far away to shoot me. So anyone on the boat, too far away. This means I can ignore anyone past this point and focus on the people who actually matter. The guys in the cars, the main goal is to not shoot the drivers, because if I shoot the drivers, everyone will get out of the cars and shoot at, at me. The longer the cars drive, the more time I have to shoot the guys. It's actually harder than you might imagine to shoot the passengers and not the driver. The final discrepancy is during the mission Deep Inside, where Franklin needs to infiltrate a movie set and steal a car on the set itself. This sends guards after you, and it was claimed that it is impossible for them to not shoot at you during the escape sequence. Once again, Dark Viper claims the contrary. So there's two strats here. One where I just despawn the guys. Two, if they happen to spawn in the wrong place, I throw C4 on their cars and then blow them up. They cannot, or they don't fire back at me unless they get out of the car or I shoot at them with a gun. Throwing C4 on them, they are not particularly worried about, so they do not fire at me. As you can see, we found zero conclusive evidence to state that Unnamed's run is spliced, tampered with, or cheated in any fashion. Every single discrepancy has a logical explanation backed by people who are at a world-class level of skill and knowledge within the game. I think it goes without saying that this video is not to spite Dark Viper in any way, as to my knowledge he has never claimed Unnamed's run to be cheated. The intention of the video is actually to look at the facts and get a proper verdict from sources who actually know what they're talking about, rather than random stream viewers. To those who spammed Unnamed's video with dislikes and comments that the run is fake, I ask that in the future, I beg in fact, that you look at the facts from credible sources before coming to such a brash conclusion. This video did not take me a very long time to make, and any of you could have done some simple testing to find the actual truth and avoid the harassment a new runner is facing purely due to your ignorance. To those who had the foresight and intelligence to wait for the actual facts to be made public, thank you for doing the right thing.